JBN, we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, JCF probing alleged rape and robbery by cop. The Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF is investigating a report of rape and robbery allegedly committed by one of its members while on duty in St. Elizabeth. The incident is alleged to have taken place between 10 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. on Monday, January 30, in the town of Black River. The JCF said report is being taken seriously by the police high command and is being treated with the utmost urgency. The matter is currently being investigated by the JCF's Inspectorate and Professional Standards Oversight Bureau, the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, and the Independent Commission of Investigations. The policeman, along with the other members who were on duty with him, were also taken into custody. The high command says it's awaiting the outcome of what it expects will be a speedy and thorough probe by the relevant investigative bodies. The JCF is assuring the public that such allegations are taken seriously and that it is committed to ensuring the safety and security of citizens. Two shot one fatally in Gordon Hill. The police are keeping a close watch on sections of Gordon Hill and surrounding areas in the St. Andrew based community after two men were shot one fatally and the house of a woman was set ablaze over the last 24 hours. Police believe the attack on the female is a reprisal for another incident where a man said to be her son was accused of shooting two men during an altercation in the area. One of the men identified as Anthony Clark has since died from the injuries. Information received is that on Sunday, January 29, about 12.30 p.m., a 47-year-old steel worker and another man identified as Anthony Clark when the mentioned community when an altercation developed with the suspect identified as Roshane Douglas. Allegations are that Douglas brandished a gun and opened gunfire hitting both victims before escaping in the area. The gunshot victims were both assisted to the University Hospital of the West Indies by citizens where Clark died while being treated. The other victim has been admitted. Police have since listed Douglas as a person of interest and have sent out a call instructing him to turn himself into the police immediately. Police say they're also asking for assistance from members of the public in locating the accused. Subsequent to that incident, police say they're keeping watch on another section of the community where the mother of the accused shooter lives as there was a reprisal in the form of arson to the house of his mother. Gunmen shoot at police patrol in Mexico. Members of a police patrol came under heavy gunfire when they encountered several gunmen in an area of Arnick Gardens called Mexico on Sunday morning. None of the officers were hurt during the shooting, the police said. It was reported that about 5 a.m., the officers were on mobile patrol duty, traveling in a marked service vehicle, when they received information from police emergency about a shooting in the community. The cops reportedly proceeded to Mexico, and while going through the area, observed five men all armed with guns. Reports indicated that the men, upon seeing the police team, opened gunfire at the officers who took evasive action. One of the cops returned fire and the gunmen fled and escaped. During the shooting, a Toyota Mark X motor car was damaged. Reinforcements were called and the scene processed. The Independent Commission of Investigations was alerted about the incident. Cops still probing St. Thomas Technical student shooting. No action has been taken against the licensed firearm holder who shot and injured a student of the St. Thomas Technical High School last Tuesday. Head of Operations of the St. Thomas Police Deputy Superintendent O'Neill Thompson said the police are still probing the incident which occurred just outside the school's gate. We are still conducting investigations, DSP Thompson said. He revealed that the schoolboy has been released from hospital. Following the incident, the licensed firm holder gave a statement to the police and his gun was seized for ballistic testing. It was reported that the licensed firm holder was driving along the main road near the school when he saw a group of boys fighting. He reportedly intervened when one of the boys used a knife to stab at another. The licensed firearm holder reportedly discharged his weapon on the ground in a bid to calm the situation. The two boys subsequently fell and he noticed that one was bleeding. He subsequently rushed him to the hospital. Bar operator charged after 27 rounds of ammunition found in sock. A bar operator has been charged with unauthorized possession of ammunition following the siege of over 20 rounds of ammunition at his home in St. James on Monday. Charged is 33-year-old Albert Dobson of Seaview Heights, Flankers in the parish. Reports from the Montego Bay Police are that about 3 p.m. 
and Snapred was carried out at Dobson's home when 27.40 mm cartridges that was placed on a shelf. Double murder suspect killed in police shootout. A double murder case was cleared up posthumously after the alleged killer was cut down in a police shootout last week. Aton Cargill, 26, otherwise called Bow, from Maiden Street, Kingston 12, was said to be the trigger man behind the killing of two brothers on Carinsville Road, Kingston, last September. The murdered men were identified as Garth Lyons, otherwise called Boo, 44, from Carinsville Road, and Richard Lyons, otherwise called Dudeman, 32, a bank repairman from Admiral Town in Kingston. It was reported that the brothers were sitting together on the roadway when a white Toyota Voxy drove up and stopped. Two men alighted, opened gun fired the two, and killed them on the spot. The men then escaped in the vehicle. Police said around 12.45 p.m. last week Monday, Cargill was involved in a shootout with lawmen on Target Street in Norman Gardens, Kingston 2, during which he was shot and killed. Last Thursday, a witness identified Cargill as one of the men who alighted from the Voxy and opened fire on the brothers. As a result, the double murder case was cleared up. Police still searching for a driver in fatal St. John's Road hit and run. The police in St. Catherine are still searching for a driver who killed an elderly man and injured another in a hit and run. They say investigators have so far been unsuccessful in their efforts to contact the male driver. The police are now making a public appeal for him to turn himself in. The fatal crash happened on the morning of January 25 along St. John's Road in Spanish Town. It is reported that about 8 o'clock, the now deceased, 61-year-old Clive Maitland, was walking along the roadway in the vicinity of the Ebonneville community when a Toyota motor car hit the senior citizen and another man. The driver fled the scene into nearby bushes where the injured men were left on the ground motionless. They were taken to the Spanish Town Hospital where Maitland died. The other man remains hospitalized. The incident was the third fatal crash to be recorded in the St. Catherine North Police Division since the start of 2023. Last year, the division recorded 32 road fatalities. Thousands converge a traffic court on final day of reprieve. Thousands of motorists converge on the corporate area traffic court today as they attempted to settle outstanding traffic tickets. Today is the final day for the reprieve on the payment of outstanding tickets. The lines of motorists attempting to avoid incurring demerit points snaked from the court building along Melbourne Road, spilled onto South Camp Road and resulted in a traffic snarl along the major thoroughfare. Today's crowd appeared to dwarf all of the days combined since the reprieve was granted, with some motorists indicating that they were out as early as 3 a.m. seeking to clear outstanding tickets. But many of the motorists will not get to see a judge today. Instead, what they have is a printout of their traffic ticket which will be stamped by the court administrator, so if they are stopped by the police, they will not be arrested. The court administration division says it has added more manpower in an attempt to speed up the process of dealing with all who have turned up for court. When questioned about the process of clearing up the tickets and avoiding the merit points, Director of Communication in the division, Kadisha Fletcher, said motorists are attending court for a judicial process and the judge will determine the eventual penalty. She noted that some people are also surprised when their license is suspended. For example, as they thought, the reprieve meant they were simply coming to pay a fine. But she maintained that the traffic ticket is a criminal offense for which a plea has to be entered and for which the judge decides the punishment based on the charges. The new road traffic act and regulations come into effect tomorrow, Wednesday, February 1, and among other things, will introduce increased penalties for offenses as well as electronic ticket management system. Judge Flagg's ID issues in murder arson witness testimony. Chief Justice Brian Sykes signaled on Monday that evidence given by one of the former Wondong gang members about a double murder and arson incident may not be of any use to the Crown. Continuing his summation in the Home Circuit Court, the judge said that the witness's account of his observation at the gathering with the alleged gangsters before the incident may not meet the legal standards in terms of identification as he had failed to say or he was able to see the person's charge on the night in question. German Brian and Sedella Welder were reportedly murdered in bed on September 9, 2017, when members of the gang reportedly stormed the new nursing community in St. Catherine in search of Bubba Sparks, an alleged top shooter in a rival faction of the gang. The alleged gangsters had reportedly touched the house of the couple inside after shooting them. Their bodies were burnt beyond recognition. Reputed leader Andre Blackman Brian is alleged to have killed the man 
while his alleged bodyguard, defendant Tyreek James, is said to have murdered the other victim. The prosecution's two main witnesses, who are self-confessed members of the gang, had testified about the incident and about a meeting held on Jones Avenue in Spanish Town between the alleged gangsters before the attack. The witness whose testimony is in doubt had told the court that he was not at the scene when the shooting on arson occurred. He said that during the meeting, Brian instructed him to patrol the roads in the community to ensure that no police were in sight. He further testified that while on the lookout, he heard the explosions. The witness, who had described his role as Brian's personal driver and the gang's banker, had told the trial that on the night of the incident, he had seen a crate with about 12 bottle bombs. But in some of the witnesses' evidence on Monday, Justice Sykes pointed to a legal hurdle that exists in the witnesses' accounts. When you look at the evidence of Mr. X on the night of the incident, when the persons alleged to have gathered at Miss G Yard, there's not one word saying anything about lighting. Absolutely nothing. So the question then becomes, how would the legal standards of Turnbull be satisfied? The judge explained that based on the principle that governs identification, answers will be needed for certain critical questions, including the witness indicating how he was able to see, by what means of lighting, the distance, and whether there was anything blocking or announcing his ability to see. However, Sykes said that the witness's evidence did not answer those questions, nor did the witness indicate for how long he had observed the men whom he claimed were present. Brian and James, along with defendants Dylan McLean, Brian Morris, Jazil Blake, Michael Whiteley and Fabian Johnson are all charged on Count 7 and 8 of the indictment for facilitating the commission of murder and arson. The witness had testified to seeing all of the above-named defendants on the night in question. The other ex-gangster are former committed Don, what placed all of the defendants except for Morris and the Johnson at the gathering, had testified that natural light and a bulb had enabled him to see. He testified that two groups of men went on the mission, adding that he was in a group with Brian and the men with whom he had named. However, there was no mention of lighting in his accounts about the journey to the community and what had transpired in the community. The judge said the court in this instance has been asked to infer that the group of men with whom the witness was traveling was the same group of men who carried out the murder and arson. In relation to the discrepancy between those who were named by the witnesses, the judge said that the Crown seems to be suggesting that it does not matter as they all ended up at the victim's home. Justice Sykes, however, indicated that the success of the Crown on these two counts rests almost exclusively, if not exclusively, on the evidence of the community done and not so much on the other witness. Commish urges police to provide guidance on the new road traffic law. The police are now in high gear for the rollout of the new road traffic law as motorists continue to overrun traffic courts across the island with just hours before time runs out on the reprieve that the government has offered from traffic ticket penalties dating back to February 2018. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson employed members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force on Monday to familiarize themselves with the most pertinent components of the law and to be mindful of their interactions with citizens in enforcement activities come Wednesday. Speaking at a Road Traffic Act and Regulations training conference at the National Police College of Jamaica, the Commissioner said, We are about to get going. There are a lot of persons at South Camp Road Traffic Court trying to get their tickets paid and hopefully after this period, things will settle down and will move forward with people becoming more compliant with the rules and regulations of the new Act. Anderson stressed that it is also important that both the police and the general citizenry be educated about the new law. We're working on some information. We're also working on a rough and ready guide for the police, particularly with those offences that are most common, so that our officers have an easier time. This Act impacts probably a wider cross-section of the country than every other Act, because everybody uses our roads, he stated. The police commissioner urged members of the police force to focus on the key components of the new road traffic act over the coming days. There will be a lot of information. It's really important that as we get started on February 1, that we are all fair with what we need to be doing. In the early stages, we are going to have to spend a lot of time guiding persons. And as we deliver those tickets, it's important that we have the correct interaction with the public. When you ticket someone, it's not personal. They have committed a breach and we respond, he said. JB and we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.